Hey everybody. So I think the best way to start this video off would be to look up the definition of the English word requirement. Okay, so the Cambridge.org dictionary defines a requirement as something that you must do or something that you need. Some examples would be a good degree is a minimum requirement for many jobs. Or it is a legal requirement that you have insurance for your car. Or students who fail to meet the requirements of the course will fail. So a requirement is something that you must have. Okay, so Microsoft, when they announced Windows 11, they announced a very stiff set of minimum system requirements. Requirements. In other words, you got to have these features. Your, your computer must meet these requirements in order to run Windows 11. But lo and behold, the posted requirements, the requirements that your system must meet to run the installer for Windows 11, mind you not bypassing the system requirements or using one of several methods to get around them, your, your system must have a specific set of requirements in order to execute the installation of Windows 11. Okay. In the past, for example, <clears throat> Windows XP, you had to have at least a Pentium CPU, yeah, a Pentium CPU, in order to install and run the software. Okay? A Pentium CPU was much older than CPUs available at the time that Windows XP was released. You had the Pentium 4 coming out at that time. It was back in 2001. If you set up Windows XP on a system that just met the minimum requirements, chances are it wouldn't run too well. It would actually run quite slow. Another example would be Windows Vista. If you set up a system with Windows Vista meeting only the minimum system requirements for the Vista operating system, chances are likely the system would run quite terrible. It would be very pitiful. Yeah. Um, same goes for Windows 7. If you set up a system with Windows 7 using just the minimum system requirements, it wouldn't run very well at all. <clears throat> Fast forward to 2021. We have Windows 11 being released. Microsoft decided that computers that were older than three years old would not meet the requirements for Windows 11. For example, a computer that you would buy brand new in early 2018 sporting a Ryzen 7 1700X CPU, you would be ineligible to upgrade to Windows 11. Microsoft would say just keep using Windows 10 or upgrade your PC or more, actually more likely they would say buy a new PC because I think that's really the goal at hand here is to get people to buy new PCs. So in case you're wondering, what exactly does Microsoft claim that your system must absolutely have in order to install and run Windows 11? Let's go and have a look here. The system requirements as published by Microsoft include a one gigahertz or faster CPU with two more cores on a compatible 64-bit processor or system on chip. They claim you need four gigs of RAM Pretty fair, actually I suggest 8 gigs of RAM at least with Windows 11. 64 gigabytes of storage, UEFI system firmware, secure boot capable, and they require that you have the trusted platform module TPM version 2.0. And of course a graphics card compatible with DirectX 12 or later with the WDDM 2.0 driver and a HD 720p display. Okay, so the big gotchas there in this are the processor needs to be one of the ones listed in Microsoft's list of compatible CPUs and the TPM 2.0. Okay, a lot of computers out there 
have Secure Boot already in them and of course have UEFI. So the thing is, I knew right away that something was very uh, suspicious with these requirements. And once I started experimenting with 1.11 in 2022, I, at the time, had no compatible PCs. None of my computers, none of my systems, including my daily driver system, the Midtower Lux, with the Ryzen 7 7700X processor, met the system requirements on Windows 11. So I thought, okay, let's go and bypass these requirements using one of the many methods to do it. And let's see how well Windows 11 runs on that system. The very first system I ever tried with Windows 11 is an AMD A6 6420K APU. And let's just say with, I think it had 4 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM and a solid state drive, a SATA SSD, <clears throat> it ran beautifully. It ran very well. And I started testing on other computers that I have. For example, a Dell Octoplex 390 with the Core i5-2400 CPU. You set that system up with 8 gigs of RAM and a solid state drive. Windows 11 runs very well on it. <clears throat> now, of course, at the time, Windows 11, you could run it on much, much, much older systems. We're talking systems that didn't have UEFI. We're talking about systems from 2006, 2008. When you set those systems up with a solid state drive and plenty of RAM, they would actually run Windows 11 relatively well. Not bad for a computer of that age. And it was at that point that I came up with the unofficial branding Microsoft Elite class. It says Microsoft uh, was reserving only a select number of existing computers to the Elite class to run Windows 11. And this is why I call the system requirements for Windows 11 the Microsoft Elite class minimum system requirements for Windows 11. In my opinion, they're an absolute scam. Want to know why? One of the many methods you can use to bypass what I call the Elite class system requirements for Windows 11 is a very simple command line switch. It has worked for many years, ever since Windows 11 came out to my knowledge. And there was speculation that Microsoft patched it in 25H2, but has seemed to be the case. Basically, you're, you're tricking the installer into thinking you're installing Windows Server. And why does this work? Oh, gee, I don't know. Oh, I know. Because the system requirements for Windows Server 2025, even, are more realistic of what I actually need to run Windows 11. Just the server variant of it. Now, to be honest, when you run the product server or switch, you're not actually installing Windows Server 2025 on your system. You're still installing Windows 11 on that system. It's just you're bypassing the artificially inflated system requirements for Windows 11. Microsoft has it published on their website under Microsoft Learn. You only need a processor that is 1.4 gigahertz, 64 bit. It's compatible with the 64-bit instruction set, but it supports SSE 4.2 and POP CNT instructions. Those are the hard requirements for Windows 11 24H2 and later. For example, if you look back at the requirements for Windows Server 2022, it specifies a 1.4 gigahertz 64-bit processor compatible with the 64-bit instruction set. But you can see there's no requirement for SSE 4.2 and POP CNT. Um, for example, Windows 11 back then, version 23H2 and older would run on anything down to an AMD Athlon 64 socket AM2 platform CPU or an Intel Pentium D, some Pentium 4s even. Yes, stuff that old. Meanwhile, Microsoft was saying you needed to have a system with at least a Zen Plus CPU or an 8th generation Intel Core or related CPU. That's much newer than what you actually had to have to run Windows 11. So for example, with Windows 11 24H2 and 25H2, what do you actually have to have? 
to install the OS when you bypass what I call the Elite Class System requirements. You actually only need to have a processor that is 64 bits, 1 gigahertz or faster. Well, you definitely want at least uh, something good, a bit faster than that. Um, with two or more cores, with POP CNT and SAC 4.2 instruction sets. Yeah, that's all you actually need. In the system firmware, recommend that you have UEFI with Secure Boot, but it'll actually install on systems with a classic BIOS. Yes, even 25H2. Yes, even the 2025 release of Windows 11. To me, it seems that Microsoft, this is just me, this is my speculation, and probably a lot of people out there would say the same thing. This, in my opinion, in, with, in conjunction with the ending of Windows 10 support, which is happening next week, it's a big marketing ploy. It's a way to force people to replace their existing good computers with new computers. Elite Class Certified PCs, as I call them, or Elite Class AI Certified PCs that meet the requirements for Microsoft Copilot Plus PC specifications. So that way, um, I guess, Microsoft can uh, inject more AI into your life, track you more. Yeah. Um, again, as I've said in prior videos, the Windows 11 system requirements are an absolute scam. Now, if you're thinking about bypassing the Elite Class System Requirements, again, that's my nickname, the Elite Class System Requirements. Um, here are some things to know. <clears throat> when you bypass the System Requirements and you force install Windows 11 on a system that don't meet the Elite Class System Requirements, um, you will have to manually install new feature builds because Microsoft will not offer them to you. In a way, it's kind of a good reason because, for example, earlier builds of Windows 11 would run on older stuff than newer builds such as 24H2 and 25H2 um, and trying to force install those onto older systems would likely result in issues. Now to be honest if you let's say use the Rufus method or the command switch method to try to force install Windows 11 24H2 or 25H2 on a system that does not have POP CNT and SSE 4.2 you will actually get an error message and actually if you try to um, boot the installer it will actually not boot it'll, it'll crash and restart so I mean yeah it's like it's, it's like a big it's like a marketing ploy to try to force people to, to upgrade to buy a new PC now is it working not real sure about that um, I'm seeing reports that PC sales are not really strong right now I think a lot of people are going to either a stick with Windows 10 unsupported even some may pay the $30 or meet the I think thousand Microsoft reward point requirement in order to get um, another year of Windows 10 support they may bypass the system requirements for Windows 11 and force install Windows 11 on their existing computers you can still you will still receive driver updates um, security patches hot fixes all that good stuff you just had to manually force install feature updates and in some cases you may have incompatible drivers um, which a very known issue on this channel is the Realtek Ethernet dr controller driver that Microsoft supplies in the Windows 11 installation media that crashes Windows 11 when you try to connect to the internet pretty easy fix for that and in some cases you might have to disable fast startup which I have a video on that as well so option number three would be to install Linux I think Microsoft's what I call elite class requirements for Windows 11 and the ending of Windows 10 support is going to be a great thing for Linux. People are getting sick and tired of Microsoft playing their games here with the system requirements and just, you know, the telemetry that they're doing in newer versions of Windows, trying to force Microsoft accounts on people, just you name it. People are getting sick and tired of it. People want a new operating system that functions like Windows 7. And Linux seems to be the best viable option, in my opinion, for that. But yes, um, I think option, I think 
I think option B or option number two is quite a popular option. Not just home users. I know of IT, corporate IT environments where they are bypassing the requirements and force installing Windows 11 on their computers because computers cost money. Yeah, screw the elite class system requirements. So anyways, that's what I think about the Windows 11 system requirements here in October 2025 as Windows 10 supports about the end. Yeah, I think they're a big freaking scam. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.